Today we're gonna to break down a little finger picking groove. If you stumbled across this video and you're relatively new at finger picking, I break down a beginner finger picking pattern in this video up here. Feel free to take a crack at this one, but I will say that this is geared a little more towards intermediate to advanced finger pickers. There's a link in the description that'll take you to my website. All the lesson materials for this video will be found there. So first let me try to distinguish the difference between what I would classify as a finger picking pattern versus a finger picking groove. If you're looking at finger picking patterns or just finger picking in general, I'd classify it to be something kind of like this. There are probably hundreds of different approaches to finger picking. It doesn't have to sound exactly like what I just played, but I think you'll kind of know it when you hear it. With the finger picking groove, we're gonna use our picking hand to not only strike notes, but add some percussive attacks to what we're playing. Diving into finger picking grooves is great for instances where you're kind of low on instrumentation and the guitar needs to fill more than the role of just being a harmonic instrument. For instance, if you're accompanying someone who's singing or you're playing chord melody stuff, um, adding, adding a bunch of finger picking grooves to your arsenal is gonna give what you're playing a lot more feel. So the groove we're gonna look at today is based around this pattern. It has kind of like a swung triplet feel and it really implies a lot of rhythm. So there are five unique movements that constitute this groove. So first we're gonna just put our fingers on the strings and the fingers that we assign to the strings are not really gonna move anywhere. Uh, so, for example, the thumb is going to lay on top of the low E string, the index is going to lay under the D string, pulling up, middle under the G string, and ring under the B string. So, your thumb's going to strike down, your index, middle, and ring are going to all pull back up. So, this groove is going to happen two times per bar. So, if you loop the groove twice, you have one measure. Now, let's hold on to a G major 7, and let's break it down. So the first move happens on the one and the three, and that's the thumb striking the low E string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Easy enough. Now, if we're thinking kind of like a swung feel, we would count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So the next move that happens is we're gonna kind of complete the chord with our index, middle, and ring finger. So that's gonna, they're gonna strike up on the D, G, and B string like this. So that's gonna happen on the and after one and the and after three. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Now the next move that's gonna happen is we have kind of like our snare drum. So that's gonna be a hit. And I'm kind of using like my palm and a little bit of my thumb. I'm not really using my fingers at all. I'm gonna keep my fingers curved and after I hit, my goal is to get all of those fingers to land exactly back on the strings that they started on. So index should be under D, middle under G, ring under B. When you hit, that's where they should, they should be there. So, right, like I can, I can hit, not move my fingers at all, pull up and I'm on the strings that I need to be on. So again, that happens on two and four. If you count it out, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so that hit on two and four is going to start a triplet. So that would be the first note of the triplet. The next note is going to be you're going to strike a dead D string with your index finger. So one and triple it, one and triple it. So I'll slow it down a little bit. And just a quick note, I kind of deaden the chord at the same time I'm hitting the string. So the chord gets deadened down here. And you can see as I'm hitting, I'm lifting my fingers not completely off. Not, I'm not changing the shape at all. I'm just kind of no longer fretting them. I, they're just laid on top of the strings and I'm not pushing them all the way down. So we have one more movement to complete the triplet and you can do this one of two ways. Um, the first way would be to strike a dead low E string with your thumb. So you have 
one, triple it, one, triple it, one. So it's kind of tricky. You have two thumb strikes. If you loop the pattern, you've got two thumb strikes in a row. So one and triple it, and then you go back again. So the other way to do this would be to strike an open E string. So this is going to depend on what key you're in. Um, the key is going to allow you to either strike a low E string or it's going to be a little more pleasant if you uh, deaden it depending on the key. So for example, if you're in E flat, that doesn't sound super good. You've got an E and an E flat kind of rubbing against each other. so. I wouldn't advise doing it in that key, but like for G, you're hitting the six. Doesn't sound too bad. A, it sounds especially good in, because you're going back and forth from one to five, back to one. So in that regard, just kind of use your ear. If it sounds like hitting an open string, even if you're doing the same thing on the A string, um, if it sounds like the open string is kind of clashing with the chord, then maybe just deaden it. So I would definitely recommend practicing in the exact way that I showed you. So turn on your metronome and just try to hit on one and three. When you feel comfortable with that, add the next movement. When you feel comfortable with that, add the next one. so on and so forth. Um, if you, if you kind of deconstruct this groove and really break it down that way, I think you're gonna get it a lot faster than if you just try to dive right into it. I've looped some audio files for you to play along to over on my website. I've got slow all the way up to fast of me playing through this groove. Um, so I would definitely recommend for this, you either wanna practice with like a click or a drum beat or the audio files that are on my website. You gotta remember, we're creating a groove. So if the technique is there, but the timing isn't there, then this whole thing is unusable. So once you feel comfortable just holding down one chord in the left hand and getting through that groove and being able to loop it a couple times, then try to move it around some chords. dive a little deeper, feel free to head over to my website and fill out the form for a virtual one-on-one. -on -one. If you found this video to be helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.